Well, that horrible noise was a loop controlled by Gizmo's step sequencer. Gizmo was playing a Kawaii K4, an Oberheim Matrix 1000, a Korg SG Rack piano module, and a Korg microsampler, each on separate MIDI channels with the microsampler sample length synced to MIDI clock from Gizmo. I won't make any comment on the music quality. I know the screen looked like a scene out of the Matrix, but the step sequencer really has a pretty straightforward interface. This video will explain how it works. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, I suggest you do that before watching this one, as it explains a lot about Gizmo that we won't cover here. Also, even though the buttons and knobs are more fiddly than just controlling Gizmo via NRPN, I'll continue to do it here for demonstration purposes. Gizmo's step sequencer plays multi-track loops of notes and rests. Each note is stored with a pitch and a velocity so you can play different notes in the same track. Notes on a track normally have the same length, but you can extend a note to cover multiple steps. When you first enter the step sequencer, you'll be asked to either load an existing sequence from, from a slot in Gizmo's Flash or to create a new one from scratch. Here, we're being asked if we want to load from slot 0, and it's telling us that there's already a sequence there, that's the S. Let's instead make a new one. If you make a new sequence, you'll first need to specify its format. Gizmo allows 12 tracks of 16 notes, 8 tracks of 24 notes, or 6 tracks of 32 notes. We'll pick a 16 note sequence. This is the step sequencer edit screen. Before we start, let's talk about what appear to be some cryptic LED lights. What I'm moving here is the edit cursor. It's presently sitting at the first step of the first track. You can change the step location of the cursor by moving the right knob. And you can change the track number by moving the left knob. As you move the cursor, you notice that the second row changes. This is the row, this is the track number indicator. Here it says we're at track number one, two, three, four, and so on. Below the track number indicator is an additional indicator which tells us what MIDI channel is associated with the track. Here it says the track one is associated with MIDI channel 1. The LEDs on the bottom right are the standard LEDs in all Gizmo applications. The LED at the far bottom right, which is presently in bypass mode, is the beat. The LED at the left is the step. The LEDs in the middle are the application. Here it says that the step sequencer is application number two, which it is. Finally, the LED just above the beat LED tells us that the step sequencer is presently stopped. To get the, to, to get the sequencer playing, we press the select button. There we go. We can stop it again. Start it again. This is the play cursor. It indicates which notes are being played. Let's first turn on a click track so we can also hear them. We do that by long pressing the select button. Try again. again. There we go. Go down to options. Then go to click. Click asks us to enter a note that will serve as the click. Now let's enter some notes. You press a key on the keyboard to enter a note, both pitch and velocity, and you press the middle button to enter a rest. If you long press the middle button, you can enter what I call a continuation. This is just a special item which tells Gizmo to keep playing the previous note. That way you can play notes which take up multiple steps or beats. For example, let's go up to track one. Oh, let's get it started. Now let's add a continuation.
Now let's add some more notes with rests. In the arpeggiator example, we saw that you can specify a default note length, a default MIDI out, among other things. In the step sequencer, you can do this too, but you can also specify them on a per track basis. To change the note length, for example, we go into the menu by long pressing the select button. Go down to length. We can go from fully staccato to fully legato, or we can say to use the default that's specified in, for the note length in the options menu. Let's do, I don't know, how about 50? 50 points fine. Now let's enter some drums in the next track. The first thing we need to do is go into the change the MIDI channel because my drum, drum device is on MIDI channel 3, which isn't the default. That's kind of silly. Let's go back and edit that. That's good. And we can't forget the hi-hats. But to do that, I'm going to enter them in a slightly different way. First, let's change them to the mini channel, the mini channel 3. Here we go. Now, instead of entering these one by one, which as you can see is a little annoying, I can go over and I can turn the left knob far to the left and we enter in what's called play cursor mode. Here you can see that the cursor, the play cursor, changes in a special way and the edit cursor disappears. This allows us to enter right when the play cursor is playing. For example, Let's change the second one entirely. I'm going to clear it. In play, in play cursor mode, if you press and hold the middle button, it'll clear the entire track. Things are getting a little busy, so let's just listen to the hi-hats. To do that, menu, and we press solo. Now I can change the track. Let's turn that off.
I can also mute. For example, I might want to mute the drum track. In Play Cursor Mode, I just press the middle button once. I can also mute another track. Go back down, and unmute them. Now let's enter a bass line. We start by going to channel 4. And I'm going to change the octave down a bit. Let's double check that. I'm sorry, it was supposed to be two. There we go. Forgot which devices are on which channel. We can also choose a note velocity for all the notes in the track between 0 and 127. For example, if I want all of the drums, to, well, let's say all the all the drums to have exactly the same velocity, I can go to velocity, and I can say. Now they have exactly 121, where they all have a very quiet velocity. Or I can say free, which means that each of them have their own individual velocities, as entered originally. I can also choose a fader for this track. 32 it means don't change the volume at all. Or I can increase it to make it up to four times louder, or all the way down to zero. We'll put it back to 32. Finally, let's change the tempo and add some swing. We go into the options menu again. Options. Our tempo, you can change it again. Let's put it at 70 or so. Now let's go and change the swing. We can't hear much swing because we don't have a whole lot of notes that are being played on the odd note. We could go to the hi hats. Add There we go. Now you get the idea. Now let's stop the sequence. Now the step sequencer, like the arpeggiator, can work with an external MIDI clock. For example, in the loop at the beginning of this video, the microsampler's sample length was synced to a clock generated by Gizmo. Here, instead, we'll control the step sequencer by an external clock. To do this, we first go to the clock menu.
There are a number of clock options. You can specify an internal or an external clock. You can specify whether or not the clock is emitted out. Midi, uh, emitted out. You can specify whether or not an internal clock, an external clock that's read in is also emitted and other things. You can also do a clock division to make the clock slower going out than it was coming in. Here we'll do a simple one. We'll just use <laughs> use clock. Use means to use an external MIDI clock and pass it through. Now I'll start the sequencer. But as you can see, even though it started, it's not moving. But if I start an external clock here on my laptop, things get going. Let me change the tempo to something more useful. Swing is a little strange at 120 BPM. Let's slow it down. I want to change those hi-hats again. Anyway, you get the idea. Let's stop it. There are two more options. One, we can entirely reset a track. This is the same thing as clearing a track, but it also resets all of its parameters, such as note length, velocity, MIDI out, and channel, etc. Last, we can save. Well, we'll save it in slot one. Now to get out, as usual, you press the back button. You're asked here if you absolutely want to exit because it's going to eliminate your music. And the answer is yes. And that's the step sequencer.